I'm going to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners. QUT acknowledges the Turrbal and Yagra as the First Nation owners of the lands where QUT now stands and whichever First Nation owners happen to be wherever you are standing at the moment. We pay respects to their elders, laws, customs and creation spirits. We recognise that these lands have always been places of teaching, research and learning. QUT acknowledges the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people play within the QUT community. Welcome to AIRS. I presume this means that you're either doing an MPhil or a PhD. We have the odd person who's doing something different, but generally that's what largely what people are here to do AIRS for. Please keep asking questions. I hope you found that useful. And what we're doing now is we're going to do, talk about preliminary searching. And this is a very general introduction to searching. Um, as you can see here, there's a whole swag of stuff about how to research. And it's a whole series of steps, most of which don't occur in this order normally. But we're going to discuss largely the first couple there in, in this bit in here. So a well-organised search process is really important, not just because you are now making doing a much bigger research project. You need to have a much larger area and a bigger search. But it's also to make sure you don't go off onto weird tangents. It's, I don't know about you, I find it, that whatever I find, I go down rabbit holes of information all the time. And that's why you can use your research question to narrow, to keep yourself on track. So a well-organised process will help you identify the research question, consider the types of information required to answer your question, use appropriate tools, design appropriate search statements so that you get all of the material that you want without too much extra stuff, and limit and organise the results so that you can, so that you can um, get exactly what you want in the future. So the literature review for your thesis is a much more extensive study of the literature and your searches need to be comprehensive. You need to understand where you will start searching, where you will do your searching. I really would suggest you have a chat to your supervisory team. Although your light liaison librarians can help you with information from the liaison from our point of view, quite often the supervisor will have very strong ideas about what is relevant to your research and where it would be a good idea to search. Particularly if you're transdisciplinary, they can give you other ideas to look. Consider what you're looking for and the information terrain. So if you were looking into Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander homelessness, you wouldn't you wouldn't just be using academic sorts of databases. You'd also need to be looking at inf information from government departments and the ABS with up-to-the-date statistics. Different data comes from different tools. And you need to have a bit of an understanding of your discipline knowledge, what you're looking for, how language changes over time and geographically. So if you were researching bushfires in Australia, and you put the term bushfires into American databases, you're not going to get anything. They don't use that terminology. You need to think about what terminology you'll be using in different places. In the US, you'd say wildfires or wildland fire. In Europe, you'd say forest fire. How will you systematically find all the relevant information? I really find that writing, doing a spreadsheet or a table so I know that I've ticked off searching in different places is a really good help because otherwise I don't know where I've been and I end up repeating myself again and again. You can use dictionaries and textbooks to get you started. It's a good idea to have a look at them to look for different terminology. It's a way of generating synonyms. One of your research log questions, 1C, is actually about what different synonyms you are likely to have because it's important that you don't just look for stuff like say behavioral organizational behavior you might also want to look for it with different spellings you might want to use abbreviations there's all sorts of different terminology 
And a dictionary and a, or a thesaurus can get you started with that. Somewhere else to start is looking at key authors. Um, this is another time to ask your supervisory team, especially when you're starting off and you don't have a deep understanding of the area you're researching. And remember, you're going to be the expert in this area, so you need to have read it all, but not too much other stuff. So subject headings. Generally, when you do a search, you tend to search using keywords. When we Google something, when I put in restaurants, Norman Park, I, I'm doing a keyword search. Some databases have what we call a control for vocabulary and that can be really helpful because that means that a human has actually looked at that item and said, this is about bushfires. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate just in the library search. So I'm going to search for prefabricated concrete. Now, we've got 38,493 results. These are items that have got the word prefabricated and the word concrete in them. Okay, I can make that a bit narrower by enclosing this in inverted commas so that I only get the phrase prefabricated concrete. But one of the easiest ways, if, if you've got a controlled vocabulary, is to search by, by the controlled vocabulary. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to have a look at what is being used. So here, this item here is using the subject term precast concrete construction. So if I click on that, you see it's now a subject search with that exact phrase and we're getting 333 results. Now, that means we're not getting everything that is about prefabricated concrete. But if you're looking for stuff that is largely about prefabricated concrete or precast concrete structures, this is where you can go. Many different databases do have such, um, such controlled vocabulary. The ones that would be really noticeable is anybody who uses ERIC in education or Medline. They have significant um, thesauri, which will tell you how to find the different different subject headings and they have different types of subject headings and different ways to facet it. So what we'd like you to do now is have a spend one minute using library search make it to, to looking for keywords and related terms from your research question and then go in and have a look at one of those items like I did and see if you can find what subject headings might be useful for you. Okay so there are different sorts of search tools. There's the big tools like Library Search and Google Scholar. The strengths of these is they've got huge sets of information. So Library Search searches basically all our books and DVDs and things like that, but it also searches for most of our journal articles. Not for all of them, but for many of them. And Google Scholar searches academic literature from all over the place, some of which isn't that academic. The strengths are that they're enormous. You can look through all the information. That's also their weaknesses, of course, because that means that you get thousands and thousands of answers. You also don't usually have access to things like controlled vocabulary, because what might be controlled vocabulary in one subject area won't be the same in another. Okay, databases, on the other hand, are smaller subject area based generally subject area there's some that usually offer offer advanced search features and I'll quickly get you back to one of the the ways to get to this to the databases they're down here okay so there's different databases in different areas and it's a good idea to go and have a look at the databases are relevant that are relevant to you so in architecture and built environment these are the big ones they're the important ones but there are also others for other subject areas. So construction management has a series of databases. We pay for access to these. We want you to use them. They can give you comprehensive searching and it helps you. Their weaknesses are that they're expensive, they're complex, they don't all work the same. So sometimes you won't get the results you think you're getting. But generally it, you get, you're more likely to get 
information that's focused in. They're not very good for transdisciplinary stuff either. So it's important to use the tool that's appropriate. If you searched for brush in library search, you will get lots of answers, everything from um, brush, how to brush hair, to brushes in brakes and gears. But if you then went to a database such as Design and Arts Online, you will only get information about paint brushes, which is maybe what you need. Academic integrity. Academic integrity is about how you do conduct your research. There will be all sorts of information that you will be finding about this when it comes to the research ethics and the Office of Research Ethics will be helping you with that and putting in um, applications for doing your research correctly. The bit that often comes up is plagiarism and I think that's what is most likely to cause problems for people at your level. Um, it includes using anyone else's phrases or expressions without acknowledgement, using texts, diagrams or ideas, even from websites or things that are publicly available. That doesn't mean that you can't use them, it just means that you have to acknowledge them correctly. Using or developing ideas from other people, even if you use your own, your own words. Failing to use quotation marks when you directly quote someone, failing to reference correctly. So this link here that you'll get to will take you to a page about plagiarism in theses and how to avoid it and the link here will take you to QUT SiteRight which has got information about academic integrity there as well. When you put your thesis in it will actually be checked through a plagiarism checker called Authenticate. There are two components to referencing. There's the in-text citation which usually looks like this but sometimes it's just a number that then refers you to the reference list. At QUT we tend to use four different styles, um, APA, Harvard, Vancouver or what we call legal AGLC. We have a tool called SiteRight which is you, designed specifically for undergraduates but which will give you a hand at starting off with your referencing and I'll quickly take you to that. So it just looks like this. So you can go to SiteRight, you can say I'm referencing an article in APA. It's a print article and it gives you a template for how to do it and examples. However, you guys will definitely have materials that don't fit into all the neat categories in SiteRight and it's likely you will have to refer to the manuals that are relevant as well. It's also possible that you won't be using one of these styles um, and that will partly depend on your supervisor. They often have strong ideas about what, what style you should use in particular areas. So I would have a chat to them. You might also find that rather than doing this manually yourself, it would be easier to use a tool such as Mendeley or EndNote. And we do have classes in how to use EndNote. So, the next section, the next module is about retrieving and evaluating information and you can click there and that will get you more information about that and how to judge whether the stuff is meeting the needs, whether it's the sort of material you want. In preparation for ES2, I'd select two relevant databases that are suitable for your search and from your research question develop a list of keywords and synonyms that you can try using in those areas. Well, while you're doing that, have a look at what the subject headings are in those databases because that's a really good way to prove that your theoretical constructs are recognisable.